The warmest of greetings to you, and welcome to Happily Ever Teaching. This is the podcast to help you enthrall your learners in every subject under the sun using the best teaching method known to science, storytelling. To do this, we feature special guest educators who are passionately keen to empower your children. I am storyteller Chip Cahoon, and with me today is... Hi, I'm Helen, and I currently work with reception and year one children in Buckinghamshire. And I'm Nicola, and I currently work with year six children in Hampshire, and I've also spent time in my career hoping to motivate and inspire the next generation of teachers at Teacher Training College. And today we are exploring English learning outcomes with our dramatisation of the Great Fire of London. You can listen to the story by downloading our sister podcast, Fables and Fairy Tales, or search our website, epictales.co.uk, for Sir Tommy's Fire. There you'll find a video of me telling the story that you can share with your children. And if you sign up as an epic educator, you'll also get a copy as a paperback illustriously illuminated by comic book artist Dave Hingley, as well as the full audiobook for you to download at any time. Right now, though, let's continue our discussion with Helen, Nicola and Sir Tommy, although I don't know how much Sir Tommy wants to be part of this discussion, (laughs) given how we were accusing him of so many mistakes in our last episode. Um, We're going to be looking at some English today, though. So let's start at the lower end of the school with this one, ages four to seven. Helen, where's the English here? Um, This is one of those topics that has so many English literacy opportunities so I've tried not to overcomplicate it for the younger ones, uh, but I'm sure Nicola will have loads of ideas for the older ones. Um, to start with, um, it's a very, very good topic for diary writing because yeah, often of in the, as part of the history, you look at Samuel Pepys and the fact that he wrote diaries. And so it all links into looking at what a diary is, why we keep a diary and the children um, can have a go at writing their own diary. And this is a super opportunity for doing um, some drama around what it would have been like to actually be in the midst of this event. And if I were doing this, I think I would choose an actual character from the story to for the children to be enrolled as. Okay. Because the alternative is for them to imagine they are just a Londoner there at the time. But I find that if you attach them to a, a character in the story, so you might choose uh, Thomas Fariner, you might choose the maid, <laughs> or, you know, Tommy... Tommy Bloodworth himself, which because of the way this story is written, might be a good one to choose and and do a lot of drama around the children becoming that character and experiencing the events of the fire as that character. And the more of the drama you can do in role, the more effective the diary writing will be because the children feel more absorbed in the character and actually write from their perspective. And you can do this from from reception up to year two. By the time you've got to year two, actually the children can write quite lengthy diaries with all the features of diary writing and some really effective and powerful language around how it felt and um, what they thought. And then in reception, I find that, the, again, the more you do enrol and you're exposing children to lots of different language, then they'll ha- they can have a go at writing, which wherever they are, what stage of reception they're at, um, someone can describe yeah. for them or they can have a go at a little diary themselves. So diary writing is always a very good genre for this topic and for the age range that I'm, I'm sort of talking about. And then the other one, which potentially... I would definitely do a cross reception to year two. Um, you don't really look at the Great Fire of London with reception, but you could do. It tends to be a year one, two topic generally in schools. But if you have a mixed class, then they're going to, exactly. they're going to be there, aren't they? Exactly. Yeah. And I think this one is very much to start with, would be very much an oral activity. So I've called it guilty or not guilty. So I, I actually did this not long ago with a mixed one, two group. Okay. And I looked at, first of all, it's kind of a history link. Uh, we looked at some of the different causes of the fire, which I'll, you know, we'll come back to later, but then um, get them to put someone on trial. So we were doing the, the topic of the Great Fire of London very much through drama and role play through Mantle of the Expert, which I may have talked about before. So the children took the role of the, the character of Thomas Fariner and their task was to put him on trial. Is he guilty or is he not guilty of the damage caused by the Great Fire of London? And we did a lot of talking about this, a lot of uh, verbalising the reasons for the fire and why children thought he was guilty or not guilty. Very mm-hmm. interesting to see the children. There was only a small handful that decided he was guilty and should be you know, punished. Very interesting to see which ones <laughs> those were. <laughs> Mind had, you, um, but just before you go yeah. on, had you 
told them of the methods of punishment that he would have been given back in those days? I have not. Uh, that that might have swayed. It might have swayed them actually. It <laughs> might might have swayed. Them. Hopefully, hopefully it might have <laughs> impacted them. But no, I did not. I just said you know put them in jail. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, we had a child enrolled as Thomas Farriner and we put Thomas Farriner on trial and the children had to talk about giving lots of reasons. So then this can turn into a written activity, you know, applying to the the judge at the time for why you think he's or whichever character we're talking about is guilty or not guilty. And it's very good for them to get some persuasive writing, some experience of that early on, even if they don't necessarily understand it as persuasive writing, but they are verbalizing reasons and they are trying to persuade someone yes, and then yeah. again in reception once you've done all of that oral work the children can write a sentence he is guilty because he is not guilty because uh, especially towards the end of reception many children will be very capable of doing that so fab well there's plenty there for ages four to seven so how about ages seven to eleven is there as much up there nicola there certainly is and actually it's, it's very similar to some extent and then there's some other ideas too but um the uh-huh. idea of interviewing the different characters in the text getting mm. children sort of dressed up and in character and then um, I also had the idea of a court case but not just necessarily from one perspective having the different characters that could be to blame having the king on trial because quite frankly mm. ultimately a responsibility comes down to him having different characters on trial and then writing a balanced report with right, the last yeah. paragraph saying actually I think this this has proved this so yeah so I won't go on too much about that because you've obviously said that Helen but that would work really really well for older children too um Another idea for older children is to write a newspaper report, often a little bit harder because there's so many different aspects of writing that come into it. But you could then interview some of the characters. So you could have yes. Tommy's ideas in there. Yeah. You could have the maid's idea. You could have one of the, the guys by the water who were desperately wanting to put the fire out but didn't have permission. You know, Obviously, you wouldn't have the king, but you could actually write it as if maybe it's the next day after the fire's yeah. been put out. And I also think something we find it hard to, to get across with children is the shifts in formality so writing in a formal way but bringing across like an informal cockney some sort of londoner's voice within um, mm. within the way they're speaking and, and you could actually show sir tommy speaking in, in quite a queen's english type way and, and one of the maids speaking in a totally different type of way yeah. so yeah so a newspaper report would be a good one as i say the diary is also good quite frankly writing as if you're sir tommy and ideally we can come back to that idea we had a while back about showing regret maybe within the diary he does show that regret Mm. but doesn't know how to go forward with those older children you could really get into character as sir tommy using the the way that it's been written you could really get into into his head couldn't you with the older children and, and explore those feelings of regret and the decisions he had to make and the worry he had about those decisions to get some really great diary writing definitely we We've done something similar with um, the High Woman poem and who was to blame right. for Bess's death in the, the poem, The High Woman. And, and it's one of those things that children remember. So like you yeah. say, because the story is so vivid with what he's thinking, the way they can embrace that when they're acting would would be very memorable and create some fantastic writing opportunities. Yeah. Just out of curiosity, Helen, if you were doing that diary activity with your age range, four Mm -hmm. to seven, um, would you talk about the difference in formality there, the sort of difference in character voices, I guess? I don't know if I would talk about it necessarily. The, The voice of the character would come out naturally the more role play that was done and the more the more drama that was done and the more modeling that was done by adults really maybe year two you could start to but i think i tend to focus rightly or wrongly um <laughs> at my age range there's i don't think there's a right answer i tend to focus more on the children experience and the vocabulary and coming out with it and speaking in different ways and writing in different ways without them necessarily knowing what they're doing yet if that makes sense. Right, yeah. Again, that's not, that's just a personal, just the way I do it. I don't know if it's right or wrong. I don't know. It's, it's sort of like uh, giving them the opportunity to bash out the, the main blocks and then they can chisel it down once they get into the upper end of the school. Yeah, I mean, um, recently we did some diary writing again with reception year one around the three little pigs. So they were enrolled as the big bad wolf and they very naturally, a lot of them were writing with a really good big bad wolf voice because we'd done so much of the drama, but I didn't necessarily (laughs) talk about what they were doing. They just began to do it. So. Ah, excellent. What, what is a big bad wolf voice? 
on, on, on the page. <laughs> <laughs> things like talking about delicious, the smell of delicious sausages and things. Uh. Uh, <laughs> all of those things that he would say. Things like, to, to my horror, the pigs escaped and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. So, so it's about the perspective, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. What, what would they be thinking? What would they be feeling? Yeah. Excellent. It was a small idea compared to diaries and newspapers and reports. It's, it's a smaller idea, but the, uh, writing a, a job description for the mayor, mayor perhaps after the event. So we want a new mayor of London now. Oh, uh, good what, idea. What is the yeah. job? What are we looking for? <laughs> it kind of links with our PSHE discussion as well in the yeah. last podcast. It's a small English point compared to the other ones. I think the other ones will give richer opportunities for writing. Yeah, although they won't be any less useful. True, because we all have to <laughs> apply for jobs and, um, and know the language to use to do so. So absolutely. And know what to do in the event of a massive great big wall of fire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. That's all we have time for in this episode, folks. If you'd like to talk to us about anything you've heard in this podcast, or if there's a subject you are soon to teach that you'd like us to cover, you can find us on social media using at Teach Happily, or leave us a review using your favorite podcast app. Please also share this podcast with your colleagues and help us start a story-led revolution in classrooms around the world, so children everywhere can learn in a way that's effective, memorable, and enjoyable all at the same time. Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Sir Tommy and the people of Restoration London will help us teach maths. But right now, it only remains for us to say cheerio, and we hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and we, we hope, hope to hear, hear your, your story, story soon. soon.